So you've got the support of the E.ON management, but the Uniper CEO has said that they want to remain independent. Uh, how are you going to persuade Uniper management to agree to this deal, and how important is that? Good morning. It's great to be in your in your show. Of course, our goal uh, will be to have a constructive dialogue with the Uniper Uniper management. Hey, look, Eon Eon have said in public that they were going to sell their stake uh, uh, anyhow. Uh, we approached uh, Uniper management already in July and, and suggested uh, discussions. Uh, they said that they want to stay independent, and we, of course, respect that. But since the Eon stake was available on the market, anyhow, we decided to take that route instead. And now we are looking uh, forward to becoming a, a, a good and constructive uh, shareholder in the company. And for that, of course, we are going to need dialogue with management. Well, give us a sense, Klaus Schaefer, give us a sense of that dialogue. What are you going to be proffering to him um, as something that gets him and the management on board? Well, uh, we are, of course, uh, respecting all, all agreements uh, there are with the, with the employees. Actually, we have no operational overlap uh, in their main country, which is, uh, which is Germany. We are looking forward uh, to discussions about how we could uh, uh, cooperate between the two companies in those countries where we have overlap, uh, like uh, Sweden and uh, uh, Russia. Uh, we are looking forward to a constructive dialogue between, uh, between two companies, and of course, the 47 percent stake, uh, assuming that uh, E.ON will, will tender it into the tender of that, we, that we launch, it will give us quite a lot of uh, influence, but uh, still, we are, looking at this, uh, this, we are looking at this as an investment, not as a takeover. As an investment, so what are your intentions with regards to the rest of the business then? You've made an offer for the E.ON stake and you've made this broader offer, Pekka, so where does this end up? How big a uh, holder of Uniper will you be in the future? Well, this is something that the shareholders ultimately will have to decide because uh, because we have now signed an agreement with E.ON. Uh, we will make the tender offer. Um, they have uh, said that, uh, that uh, uh, or we have agreed with them that uh, if they do not tender, they will uh, pay a, a large substantial compensation payment to us. But then when it comes to the other shareholders, every shareholder will have to decide, and then, then we will see what the outcome is. But uh, I want to make it very clear that we are, we are very happy with uh, just the uh, E.ON stake and the level of uh, influence that that would give us in the company. Well, let's talk about those other interests. You've offered 22 euros a share. I'm reading what the market is talking about this, this morning. They're saying the stake, the E.ON stake in Uniper makes logical sense. But you're going to have to come up with a knockout price, a knockout win. You're going to have to offer a, a bigger premium to get the minority interest on side. Uh, what do you make of that? This is the only deal there is. There is nothing else. That's it. You're not prepared to offer it. That is it. 22, fill or kill. You will walk away from this deal if the minority interests do not accept 22. As I said, this is the only offer there is. Oh, well, can you explain a little bit more about, I mean, Uniper's uh, global commodities unit trades anything from power to coal to LNG. How would that business fit alongside Fortum? What is the, what is the rationale there? First of all, let's remember that we are looking at this as investment, uh, not as a takeover. So there is existing management, and, and uh, we trust them 100% that they know how to run that business. Uh, commodity trading, uh, it's not uh, something that would be unfamiliar to Fortum, but of course our respective business is much uh, shorter. And we understand very well that uh, this business, for example, plays a critical important role in, in the security of supply of gas in the German, German market. So we respect that business very well and look forward to working with uh, Uniper's uh, management in, in, in uh, developing that, uh, when they are developing that business further. Pekka, can I ask you, obviously, uh, how China fits into this market, into the coal markets, into pricing. If China was to stop supporting the coal market and we had a plunge in prices, would that or could that change your perspective on some of the businesses? Well, it would not change our perspective on this uh, on this deal, uh, but of course uh, we all know that uh, that uh, uh, for the European utility business and for the power price in the European market, uh, one of the important factors is the coal price, and the coal price has been doing quite well recently. And and the comments from the Chinese government have been that uh, that they would have an interest 
to maintain uh, prices on a, a reasonably uh, high uh, level, close to le- close to the levels where they where they currently uh, currently are. This is a very important thing. It's not the only factor that is driving power prices, but it is one of them. Uh, and Pekka, in relation to some of these fossil fuel assets that you would be investing in with this deal, then how does this deal, which includes these fossil fuel assets, how does it advance Europe's transition? to other fuel sources. You've said it advances it. How does it? The European energy transition is about three things. It is about decarbonization, security of supply, and affordability. We need to make sure that we are able to provide affordable energy to consumers and, uh, and businesses across uh, Europe. Both decarbonization and security of supply are important. Um, it is a fact today that 40% of the electricity in Germany is produced by, by coal. Uh, Germany is going to shut down nuclear power in 2022, which makes the security of supply even more important. And uh, the more solar and wind there is in the system, and we hope that there will be a lot in the future, the more uh, solar and wind there is, the more important security of supply becomes. And there, uh, Uniper has really interesting assets like uh, flexible gas assets, which are going to be very important, especially in those parts of Europe where there is not enough hydropower available as balanced power.